As many of you guys know, I am a huge fan of the Assassin's Creed games. I have been for a long time, and I love these games for a lot of very complicated and often conflicting reasons. I love the realistic recreation of historical cities and sites and cultures, the ability to explore places and cultures that no longer exist. I find it really cool. The free running system is extremely satisfying and fun, and the stealth is always rewarding and yet challenging. So naturally, I have not had a great time with the last few years of Assassin's Creed, which is why I've decided to go back and play a game that I think is freakishly underrated. I've talked about it a few times before. If you follow me over on Twitch, you've heard me talk about it many times before. But today we're gonna explore Assassin's Creed Unity, and I'm gonna try to explain just why I think it's such a special game that more people should give a chance. And to do that, we're gonna actually have to play the game. Join me over at the desk. Ooh, okay, let's get into it. But first I wanna say a quick thank you to our sponsor, Wondershare. So as you can see, we've got a collection of a bunch of different reactions and things that you can download straight off of this Filmstock Wondershare site, and you can put it on whatever videos you want, clips you want, turn it into something funny, go crazy. Now, if you don't have any editing software, that's not a big deal, don't worry. Wondershare has got you covered. You see Wondershare Filmora and FilmGo come in to play here. In Filmora, you can just find the effects package named Luke Stevens Gaming Journey Pack. Then you just overlay my face sticker onto whatever video you wanna make with Filmora and it works great. Or if you don't have a high-end computer or anything to edit on, you can actually edit straight off of your mobile device using Filmora Go, which is a mobile app that you can download that is extremely easy to use itself. And I know these videos seem really complicated, like how do I even begin making something like this? And the simple answer is use good tools, work smarter, not harder. And Filmora and Filmora Go are applications that are designed for beginning video editors to get their feet on the ground. So if you want to start making videos or put my face onto some memes just for the hell of it, then go for it. Check it out at the link in the video description box below. And when you guys make some content using these packs, make sure to use hashtag Luke with Wondershare so I get notified of all of your interesting and fun creations. Share them on social media, Twitter, Reddit, wherever. I'll check them out and I'll make sure to share my favorites. Again, check them out at the download link in the video description box below and in the pinned comment. But okay, with that said, let's get into it. So Assassin's Creed Unity launched back in 2014 to mixed reviews. Long story short, the game was freakishly broken when it launched and spawned many memes and long lasting criticisms that this series had fallen by the wayside and was damned to drift into obscurity. I mean, the meme potential alone was extraordinary and it came at the perfect time because 2014, if you recall, was when all of these loot boxes and crazy pay to win schemes were first finding their way into AAA gaming in a real notable way. And Ubisoft comes along with a game that features co-op and multiplayer with a very robust in-game store, which has, I'm just gonna be real, pay to win mechanics within it. And it, it was broken and unfinished, so it fit exactly what game journalists and game consumer advocates were looking for as a scapegoat and as a symbol of what you don't do. And I should be clear, when I say pay to win, this is a single player game. There are co-op missions and things you can play with friends that's actually pretty well done. We'll get to that later. But when I say pay to win, what I'm referring to is the ability to buy these Helix credits, which you can then use to redeem weapons in the game, which are extremely powerful. And you can also buy time saver packs, which allow you to redeem more currency and experience points just by playing the game normally. These are the things that are still present in Assassin's Creed games, including Valhalla to this day. And this game is weird because it comes at a middle point between transitionary uh, steps in Assassin's Creed as a franchise because it still has missions like this where you're tackling criminals and thieves and exploring the city generally like you would have in uh, say Assassin's Creed uh, 3 or even Rogue or Brotherhood or one of those. And yet it still features a lot of different mechanics that were interesting and new, such as the four player co-op missions, which allowed you to go through main story missions with a friend or dedicated missions on the side, which were just built around playing with multiple people and they work really well. Now in the years since the game's launch, it has seen many, many patches and improvements. 
though it's not perfect. I've said this before, I think it is playable now and it is ready to be enjoyed, but there are still problems. For example, at this very moment that I just paused the game, you can see in the distance, there's just a chunk of building missing. See that right above his head? There's just a piece of the building missing. <laughs> there's also the occasional frame drop. There are NPCs that go crazy. If you look in the distance, right above Arno's head, you can see pop in from NPCs like crazy. And bear in mind, this is running on a PC that costs about $5,000 to purchase new. So it's not a hardware issue, it's a software issue. And there are tons of problems still present today. Now you might have a really high resistance to this type of thing. It might not bother you. And if it doesn't, I highly recommend you jump on the game now because everything else is still very robust. It's just unfortunate that there's a lot of clunk around the overall tech that's at the core of this game. I mean, even now on this computer, it's running at over a hundred frames a second. It's just, that we still have to deal with some pop-in and other data streaming issues that Ubisoft just wasn't able to fix before the game launched, and now it's too late to change it because the engine is baked in. But one thing the engine really does have, which I, I still insist is extremely impressive to this day, now eight years after this game launched, is one of the most robust and impressive lighting engines that's ever released in a AAA open world game. Seriously, what they're able to do in some of the cutscenes and with subsurface scattering is just out of this world. Like it, it really competes with the likes of Red Dead Redemption and other big, big titles that have hundreds of millions of dollars behind them. And it's really bizarre because we contrast the really great lighting engine for cutscenes and things with the quality of data streaming and the way that the rest of the game is built. And it's a little bizarre because we have something great right here and then elsewhere we have texture pop in and artifacting right there above arno's head we have a bunch of low res textures over here and then uh in front of this building of course the textures are really really poor and on that roof it's really really rough but then we look off in the distance and those textures are better so just in general there's a big problem with how the game handles the data that it streams in and displays. But setting aside graphical issues, which are just part of the game at this point, though they are improved over the launch of the game, they still are present. Let's talk about some of the things that this game does really, really well. And I want to start with something that just doesn't exist in modern Assassin's Creed games. And it's something I'm doing right now. And that is actual free climbing that doesn't look like it's copy and pasted out of a mobile game. The control scheme is far more complicated with you having to hold down right trigger to activate the free running system and then holding down B or A in order to free climb up or down a particular object. The controls are far more complicated with you having to hold down R2 to activate free running and then holding down A or B to tell the game basically whether you wanted to free run up or down in general and it allows you to do some really cool moves as you work your way down buildings with an animation set that is far more comprehensive than anything that exists in this franchise nowadays. You know it's funny because often when we talk about sequels and later releases in a franchise we're talking about generalized improvements and ways that they took things up a notch but in this case this free running system is just not in Assassin's Creed anymore. They stripped it out and replaced it with very basic running animations where you can run up walls straight up and then climb up and then you run up a little further. Okay, that that was a bug. I'll, oh, yep. Yeah, okay, we're glitching a little. <laughs> yeah, he's just going to he's just going to keep doing it. It's just going to keep freaking out. That's funny. But it's kind of sad because they did all of this work for the animation systems and everything working together for the free climbing uh, mechanic. And then they just stripped it out of future releases in favor of a simplified, sorry, 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 streamlined version of the free running system. And it's, it's worse by almost every metric compared to this. If they had just taken this system, copy and pasted it into later games, but just polished it up, it would be remarkable. It'd be phenomenal. The best free climbing system in any of these games. But instead, they just cut it out. And it's really too bad. But it serves as the first example of a phenomenon that I call the Unity effect. And it's when a studio puts out a game that doesn't do well 
for any reason. Let's say just call the reason X. In this case, X being severe technical issues. But then the publisher and the corporate heads that decide whether or not a game is going to be made or a sequel is going to be greenlit, they look at the game as a failure because of X, and then they misidentify what X actually was and make choices based on that misidentification. So, for example, in Assassin's Creed Unity, the game faltered because it was rushed out the door to get put out in 2014 in time to capitalize on the next generation console hype because the PS4 and Xbox One had just launched. And so there were tons of technical issues, and that's why the game failed. But corporate executives over at Ubisoft seem to have the impression that the game failed because, one, it had a historical location that was recreated very, very well. Two, because it played in the same vein as previous Assassin's Creed games and had mostly stealth missions associated with it. And three, because it had a really robust and impressive free climbing system that took center stage as opposed to focusing on like a melee combat system or something like that. So they ignored the real problem and instead focused on what wasn't a problem at all and stripped those things that they misidentified out of future releases. And it's just a bummer in every way, shape and form because most players weren't upset with the free climbing system. They were actually pretty stoked on it. People weren't upset that the game was set in revolutionary Paris. They were upset that the game was broken and rushed out and not given the time to really excel. And this is something you'll notice a lot as you play through Assassin's Creed Unity is all over the place, there are little shadows of what could have been the future of Assassin's Creed with these crazy huge crowds. I mean, look at how many NPCs are on screen right now. Sure, there's pop in and sure there's issues like that, but this is remarkable. Like, I can't think of another game other than like Days Gone with the zombies where there are this many NPCs on screen walking around, talking, doing their own thing. This is very impressive, and this is almost a decade old. Or the co-op stealth missions, or the phenomenal lighting engine, or any of these other features that really made this game stand out. All of those are fascinating and compelling mechanics and features. But unfortunately, because this game was rushed out the door and the corporate executives didn't want to admit it was their fault the game did badly, we never got to see what a next-gen... Assassin's Creed, given time to really excel, would look like. Instead, we got Assassin's Creed Origins and we got Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which take the series in, let's just say, a different direction. So next, I want to show you what a main story quest actually looks like in Assassin's Creed Unity, because it's very different from what we have nowadays. In this quest, we are tasked with assassinating Lafreniere which is relatively straightforward. He's going to be in this particular area you see right beneath me or under me. And we have a couple of key objectives and important information. We have four entrances in this portion of the map, 42 guards to deal with, four alarm bells, and five hiding spots. So think of that as the briefing we get for this mission. We're told what we're dealing with, where he's gonna be, and how we should generally approach it. You can see there's an entrance. We have the alarm bells over here, which they can use to alert other uh, people to come in and basically serve as backup. So if we wanted to do this by the book, we would go take out the alarm bells, then one by one stealth our way into these hordes, and then work our way down underground where we're gonna find Lafreniere and we can assassinate him. But remember I said that the game was sort of pay to win? Well, to demonstrate this point, I wanted to show you guys pretty clearly what this is like. And so I bought for like $2, I think it was, this sword I have on my side, which is extremely powerful. Allow me to demonstrate what should be a pretty comprehensive, oh God, did you see that? That wasn't scripted, that was real. What should be a pretty tough combat encounter actually ends up being extremely easy with this weapon. Like, a little stupid easy. Look how quickly I took him out. That's just not even okay. So I guess true to their word, it is uh, factual that paying allows you to skip a lot of things and save time. So what should have been like a five to 10 minute escapade and careful consideration of tactics and angles, I just 
force my way through with a weapon that is extremely overpowered because I ponied up some cash and that that just sucks boom 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 quick little assassination wacky wacky with my stick and then and then boom got you guys you're good you're welcome I also can't help but notice that these skulls are like way disproportionate <laughs> like look how big that skull is that's for like gigantopithecus, not a human being. Good God. Okay, so I'm just going to go around, knock out these alarm bells, and then I'm going to hide in a hay bale for him to arrive, and we'll be good. I totally didn't misunderstand the mission at the start and think I needed to just storm into the underground section. I totally knew what was going on, so... Yeah, and this is funny. So they don't actually really consider a lot of the broader narrative consequences for your actions. So for example, here, it doesn't really make sense that I, uh, I kill all of these people and then nothing happens. It doesn't make sense. Like something should happen because I massacred all these people. You would think that this guy I'm going after wouldn't want to come because of it. But instead, all of these people die, and guess what? He's just going to show up like normal, and it's not going to be a problem at all. The combat system is also pretty antiquated. It's just sort of like glorified button mashing, and that's about it. It really is not very compelling. It's what's known as a paired animation system, which means that you pair up animations for finisher moves and attack and defense animations, and that's about it, which basically just boils down to smash x for attack and then b for parry and then occasionally you can break somebody's defense with a but that that's like the whole thing that's the whole system that's it okay so now i'm gonna wait in the hay bale and we're gonna we're gonna assassinate somebody because why not but i mean just look at the quality of the lighting it's tremendous especially 2014 the subsurface scattering on their faces and with the skin it's out of this world for 2014. Come on. I mean, granted, the rest of the game didn't work or look very good, but the skin, oh, baby. And then we are into the body of the mission where we are going to assassinate Lafreniere. And this is your typical main story mission. It's stealth based. It has dedicated set pieces, narrative justification, pretty different from nowadays. Boom, just like that. Little hopscotch and a beat away. Then Taken Mars, out. My the cutscene plays. And be well. Two bros hanging. The costumes were always cut. tremendous in these games, Mirabeau weren't they? I just, I love the costume design. Mirabeau is a self-aggrandizing <clears throat> drunk. True. Do not forget who is Grandmaster here, Lafreniere. True. Remember your place, bro. Take this to Grandmaster de la Serre immediately. Deliver it to him in person. Yes, Master. Okay. Master, we have a problem. Christoph has been feeding information to our enemies. We must assume this location is compromised. We'll have to move up our timetable. Gather the men. We strike Hotel de Beauvais tonight. Yeah, you'll also notice that pretty much everybody has a British accent, even though they're all supposed to be French. It's sort of like the Hollywoodification of Assassin's Creed. It doesn't make sense, but it's what we're doing. So we're just going to go along with it, you know? So we did it. So now we just escape. And you notice that all throughout these uh, buildings, there are cutouts of little set pieces. So you can see inside, you can see the people walking around in their apartments. We can climb into the window and just hang out in here. Or we can push on through the other side of the window and continue on on our escape. Just like here, we can run through. It's pretty cool. If I had to put my experience going back to this game into one word, I would say it feels generally a little surreal because it has a lot of pieces of core Assassin's Creed, let's say fanfare, that people have been asking for years now. I mean, people want so much of what this game had to offer, but they haven't gotten it because it's all been stripped out of the series. And yet, even though it has so many of the things that I want in an Assassin's Creed game, 
It's also lacking a lot of other things and improvements that the other games have made, such as a more robust and, let's say, sturdy engine that doesn't, like, seem as though it's hanging together by threads. And almost everywhere you look, there's something this game does really well and far better than the current modern versions of these games. And then paired with it is something that it does far, far worse. The free running system, way better in Unity than anything that's released in the last five years. Yet, the combat system is pretty atrocious and definitely would not hold up today. The lighting engine, it's great. It really does look tremendous. Even in 2022, I would insist. And yet it's paired with all these other graphical issues and bugs of extreme pop-in. You see the characters, their shadows are popping in just as the camera pans. <laughs> like, you can't write this stuff. I couldn't script this if I wanted to. The historical setting is extremely compelling and I happen to really, really like these games being set on real, verifiable, quantifiable, historical events. I, I just find it really interesting. And yet paired with that is brain dead AI that makes it so it's really hard to take any of it that seriously. I mean, right here, they have public executions going on where they have a guillotine set up they roll the guy down and you'll see when the blade drops his head rolls into the basket and they throw his body into that crate right there just watch here we go sorry dude plop he's gone the audience is watching but they don't seem to really be that compelled they're not cheering or booing or anything they're just standing there doing nothing and then they roll the body which is, to their credit, missing a head now. Throw it in the basket, and uh, it's gone. And you see all of the people cheering in the wrong direction. <laughs> their animations don't match what's going on. They aren't facing the right way. It's just all told really, really weird. In a lot of ways, it's superficially very beautiful, very interesting, and well put together. But when you start to look with any amount of specificity, it stops being impressive, and it starts to betray a shallowness that's really not compelling. Like here, I just wandered in through the window and I'm now in these guys' apartment, stepping on their beds, looking at them at their dining table. And they aren't saying anything, they're not doing anything, they're just sitting there doing nothing. It doesn't make sense and that makes it so you can't take the world as seriously. And this is why I've said for a long time, I think these games could really benefit from an overhaul to the AI. I mean, every generation we see developers putting a lot more effort into the graphics, into the animation systems, into, let's say, the online system to make it so you can play with more friends at a time or any number of other improvements that are very immediately apparent and visible. But I think the next generation of games really should target artificial intelligence because if you can nail the design of a city like this and then put in intelligent believable npcs that world is worth exploring for its own sake that world is compelling and that is a world that i want to explore and i really think you would not have to put anywhere near as much effort into filling your map with all sorts of little points of interest like they have done here but instead, just like with Red Dead Redemption 2, you could just build a compelling world and fill it with compelling characters and let that do the heavy lifting for you. If this recreation of France was built out with characters that are living, breathing, have their own schedules, like we saw with Watch Dogs Legion, who do their own thing, have their own motivations, remember you and your actions, that alone would make it worth exploring and would be captivating. I wouldn't need much more than that. And I think that's generally the lesson that's to be learned from most Ubisoft titles of this era. And that is that they were superficially very impressive, both technologically and then also in terms of setting and design. But when you start to apply any pressure or weight onto them, they buckle under the pressure because they aren't built in a robust way. They're built to look good during a trailer or presentation 
that's about it. But then you compare it to something like Red Dead Redemption 2, which is built very, very well and very compelling. It doesn't show really well in a trailer because it's built in a very realistic way. But when you're playing it, it feels like you're escaping to another reality. And that's why people have played it for four years now and still find it to be one of the best games ever made. But you know what? We've been playing Assassin's Creed Unity for a couple of hours now. For you, it's probably just been a few minutes. But I want to look at this in a broader view and try to get some overarching thoughts in here to wrap this up. So what do we think of Assassin's Creed Unity after going back to it eight years after its initial launch? Well, I can say that I do find the world design incredibly compelling and impressive. I mean, their recreations of this city, it's nothing short of impressive. I mean, come on. But there are plenty of issues, both graphically, technologically, that still hinder this game even now. You can see the pop-in even during this synchronization for this fast travel point. It's still pretty rough. Yes, yes, it's way, way better than it was a launch. I've said that before. It's, it's still playable, I think, but it's still pretty rough. But more than anything, it really makes me just ponder what could have been. If this game had done well, had not launched in a broken state, and players had gotten to experience it in its full glory, I think it would have been received very, very well. Probably would have even been a contender for Game of the Year in 2014, going up against Dragon Age Inquisition. And if that had happened, I can only imagine what the next generation of Assassin's Creed games would have looked like. Like, what would Origins, Odyssey, and Valhalla have been if this was the game they were trying to base them off of instead of a redesign focused on The Witcher 3? It would have been very, very interesting to see how that turned out. Because what inevitably happened is Unity flopped and failed, Syndicate did okay, but they were looking for a way to reinvent the franchise. And they saw that a lot of people really liked this game called The Witcher 3, which launched in May of 2015. And they said, ooh, maybe we just do that. Both like hoods and stuff. And that's what they did. And so we got this last trilogy of games, which were fine and interesting in their own right, but they culminated in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which is the embodiment of pretty much everything that die-hard, old-school Assassin's Creed fans hate. When you think about it for just a few minutes, it makes you really kind of depressed <laughs> when you go back to play a Unity, because you realize that this is the game that basically screwed everything up. And it's a bummer. And it is still rough around the edges, but you can play it and enjoy it. And I still think it is very, very worthwhile. I mean, obviously, jumping in now, I can't really do the game a lot of justice. That's not really what this video is for. But I will say, I think Unity as a game is worth playing in 2022. It's worth trying. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you it's going to be a great experience or that it's going to be highly, highly polished because it won't be. But if you are a fan of those old Assassin's Creed games and you want to have another one of those to scratch the itch, this is a great option. It's way better than it was launch. Not perfect, but way better. But who knows? Maybe Ubisoft will surprise us and we'll get another Assassin's Creed focused on Basim, which kind of returns this franchise to its roots and lets us see a historical recreation of a city once again with stealth being the focus. Who knows? People have rumored that that's what's coming next before Assassin's Creed Infinity. I haven't heard anything confirming either which way, so I'm just sitting patiently hoping that whatever comes next is more in line with these old school games and less in line with Valhalla, which gave me an aneurysm. But let me know what you think of Unity and the Assassin's Creed franchise in general down in the comment section below the like button. I do want to hear what you think of it. I know people that work at Ubisoft and work on these Assassin's Creed games actually watch my videos. So who knows, if you leave that comment, somebody over at Ubisoft Montreal or any of their other studios might actually see your comment who knows, might even have an impact. But I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for watching. I love you all more than you possibly know. And I'll see you in the next video.